He's got an epic smile, a fast car, and lots of tattoos. Everybody give a warm welcome to the man, the myth, the legend that is Stephanos Sifandos. Oh, man. <clears throat> Firstly, you said my name accurately. Most Americans don't. That's epic. <laughs> um, that shouldn't be the first thing. The first thing should be I'm fucking deeply touched. Thank you, man. And it's reciprocal, brother. You are a big teacher in my life in so many ways, ways that continue to unravel themselves. <laughs> so I appreciate who you be in the world for me too. Um, and it was lovely, you know, teaching and facilitating with you a couple of days ago as well at our, at our Elementum function. It was great. And that was a really, really humbling introduction, man. Um, thank you. I, I appreciate you very much. I'm glad to be sure, here. man. For sure. So let's start with, um, for the people who don't know you or understand why you are teaching here today, can you give us sort of like a brief understanding of what you do in the world? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I really liked what you said the other day around um, earning our place to be able to diversify, right? <laughs> And so when I, when I started, I, I really niched. I worked with athletes. I worked with military people, um, not only in mindset and understanding um, relationships and psychology and their relationships to really hard things and how they can make those things easier, um, but also helping them integrate back into a world that was very foreign to what they've been through, right? So really working with people in extremes. And so my background's in psychology and behavioral science and trauma and somatics and studied all that stuff and just got to experience working with really cool people, uh, Olympians, gold medalists, world champion fighters, again, people that worked and lived in the extremes. And then over the years, I just started developing, um, I guess, a deeper passion, aptitude for the importance of relationships and how we relate to things that are really important to us. Mm -hmm. And then that's pretty broad, right? Because that, that applies to everyone. And so I, I, I really, I do work with a lot of people, different people. Um, the, the main thing that I do, um, I would say is, is coaching one-on-one -on -one coaching or, you know, uh, couples and so forth, and just really supporting people in moving from where they don't want to be to where they want to be. And what that often entails is really looking at and dealing with our past, getting a very clear vision for who we want to be, and then working with the stuff that's stuck in our bodies, that's preventing us from actually living that life. Right. And so really nervous system regulation, somatics, all of it. I absolutely love it. And I'm about to go super deep because I know there's a lot of coaches in here. So drop a two in the comments if you're a coach. Coach, healer, light worker, therapist, somebody who aspires to be that. Because what I'm about to say and ask him next is going to be very helpful for a lot of you. It's actually very helpful for me. So I know it's going to help you. So what many of you don't know is that... Um, Stephanos has, as he said, a, a thriving one-on-one -on -one coaching practice. Can you, and, and just answer short, and then I'm going to follow up with something. Can you talk to us about, about how much is it to work with you one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, starts at 44K up to 150K for six months. Okay. So everybody hear that so far? 44,000. To up to 60,000. Drop a three in the no, comments. Up to 150,000. Up to 150,000. Drop a three yes. in the comments if, if you would like to get somewhere in that range. If there's, a, if there's a part of you that's like, fuck, that would be nice, right? One on one clients, okay? Now, drop a four in the comments if you know that you also have some identity work to do to be able to hold that. There we go. Okay, so now here's my question, right? You see all these fours. So Stephanos, what have you had to do inside of you to get to the point where you can say 44 to 150,000, like it's past the salt? Hey, past the salt, 44. Hey, 150,000. What have you had to do inside of you to make that possible? Yeah, I'll have to get very uncomfortable. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Very, very uncomfortable, man. This and is I've spiritual to... millionaire. Let's fucking go. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've had to get very. I've had to do a lot of deep inner work, reflecting on myself, my self worth, working with that little boy, surrounding myself with people um, that dream big and think big like yourself, um, and surrounding myself with people that have uh, also come from. Uh, hardship and challenge 
and have have moved beyond that like yourself and to be inspired by that and to to witness and feel that and then honestly man just to take sort of bold courageous steps in saying fuck it i'm just going to charge this now because i'm i am getting busy or I'm, I'm getting full and i'm getting stretched and the next logical step in this to stay in this arena is to just charge more and just and just do it and that's it and do it and hey the first few times that every every time i up my prices it, it doesn't matter where i'm at in my life the first few times that i'm sharing those new prices with a prospective client i stutter i pause they may not feel it they probably do but they may not feel but i feel it and mm. it's just it's a, you've got to do it i've got to do it I'm not I'm not going to get out of that. It's, I think it's at least once, if not a few times, I'm going to feel the apprehension of charging a new price. Okay, watch this. I'm going to jump to the other side. What is it about your relationship with money that is working right now? Like when you think about like, oh, what's what's my thing that makes this just flow? Yeah. Um, I know this may sound really strange. I'm just going to say because the first thing that came to me, not caring and not giving a fuck. Mm. So I'll elaborate. <laughs> I'll elaborate. Meaning there's so many components and moving parts to that. The first is focusing on what I love to do and be in the world. Mm. So creation and service for the sake of it, not tethered to something else. Yes, I want the thing that's tethered to it as well, but primarily is um, like, example, I'm going to create content because I love creating content. I, I enjoy sharing thoughts, wisdom, experiences, questions with people. If I only get one view, well, I get a million views. And let's be honest, sometimes I'm attached to getting more views than less. <laughs> mm. Sure, for various reasons, right? Yes. And I come back to, no, I'm doing this because I just wanna create, whoever needs to see this is with, it's the same with coaching, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I don't, this, this I know the space that I occupy. I'm, I'm I'm very clear. I'm only going to be able to serve a limited amount of people. But you're going to be able to do that even if you charge zero dollars. You're still going to only be able to ch service a limited amount of people. There's a fallacy in thinking, oh, if you charge zero dollars and give free coaching to people, that all of a sudden you're going to have fifty clients a week. Not necessarily. Not at all. Actually, yeah. not at all. And so I I just I care less about the outcome and more about the thing that I'm doing is the answer. That okay. So what would need to occur prior to all of this for you to not care as much? Yeah, <laughs> it's to have lost everything. I, I, I've, I've, I've lost what I, well, I have a daughter now and I have not lost her, thank God. And I, I haven't lost everything, but previous to those points, like just losing my ego, losing a ton of money, um, not having, like coming from a lot of pain and not letting that pain consume, well, actually letting that pain consume me and then making a choice saying, no, no more. I'm done with that. Right. Mm. Like, because I, I love what you're sharing around spiritual millionaire. I love the notion of the way you share abundance and wealth and wealth creation. Because for me, all of that abundance particularly is our ability to not be contracted and fearful in our bodies and in our in our being right and that's all tethered to unresolved stuff so when we resolve the stuff we are abundant in our thinking and feeling so right. i've had to hit rock bottom brother many many times and i'm sort of in a little bit of a rock bottom place now just with being a, a new father new layers of mum stuff's coming up and dad stuff's coming up and it's like, well, do I, do I be with it or do I ignore it? Well, if I ignore it, it's just going to stay here somewhere. Yes. So I've got to be with it. I've got to get it out. And, and so that's a big part of it too. Okay. Now I'm going to jump to somewhere because I know information because you're awesome and we're friends. Um, your first webinar, what was the name of it and, <laughs> and how many people showed up? Because this, hear this, coaches, healers, lightworkers, therapists, people in here, hear this. Because you hear the 44,000 to 150,000, right? But what you don't get is this part. Your first <laughs> webinar, how many people showed up and what was the name of it? <laughs> so I've been in the personal transformation space for 24 years. I saw someone ask that. So I've been at this for a minute, right? My first webinar was called <laughs> Wednesday Weekly Wisdom Webinars. <laughs> See your face presence the best. <laughs> double, double and, and, 
Yeah, zero people showed up for approximately eight to 10 months that I ran this mm. and all the W's, that was all the W's, right? Um, and, and I ran this every week for eight to 10 months with zero people showing up because I had no idea how to market myself. In all fairness, I actually, and it was a subscription, like $7 a month or a week or something, I can't remember, it was years ago. And in all fairness, one person bought that, but never showed up and then canceled the next week, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I was getting some traction somewhere, but I would um, do that and I would then pull out a piece of paper, by the way, no nice lighting, no microphone, grainy old computer screen. I had no idea what I was doing. I want to really paint the picture for you, dark fucking room. I don't know what I was thinking, right? Anyway, and then I'd pull out a piece of paper that I wrote questions on and I would say, oh, Jeff asked blah, 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 or Mary asked blah, blah, blah. And there was no Mary and there was no Jeff and no one was fucking asking anything but me. And it was my Q&A at the end, you know? So that was my first experience with a webinar. I ain't the webinar master like you, that is for sure. Oh, it's so good. So I hope, is this landing? I hope this is landing for you guys. Eight to 10 months with zero people on it. Now you might ask yourself, oh, he got lucky, he's got muscles, he's Australian, he's, he's got a great smile. Nobody fucking showed up for eight to 10 months. For eight to 10 months, nobody showed up. That means zero dollars for eight to 10 months besides the seven dollars of the person who canceled. That's right. Right? So, seven bucks. Again, you know, we get really attached to the glory of something, but we don't really understand the story behind it. And I think a big part that you, we teach this in Elementum, is the understanding that the, um, the, the, the body and the nervous system holds on to traumas and emotion like a, a sponge holds on to water. And that cannot be figured out through the mind. It must be released through the body. And can you talk to us about your practices when it comes to your body? Because I find you to be one of the most disciplined people when it comes to that. Oh, thanks, man. I think you see me better than I see myself in that way. <laughs> mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Um, I, you know, if I was to simplify my practices, it, it's it's this, right? And, I, and I'll give you then one very specific, important practice. It's, it's breath, sound and movement, if we're talking about the body. And so we breathe deliberately in a particular way, and that could be to downregulate or upregulate our, our system. So it could be more like deliberate hyperventilative style breathing, like... <sighs> you know, something like that, or a calmer breath, like a, a, a four inhale, four pause, four exhale, four pause, just giving you some basic, that's a box breath, you know, simple stuff, right? Um, and then sounding, of course, you know, whether it's vagal toning, like humming, just to settle the nervous system and get you into more regulation, and then movement, whether it's exercise, walking, you know, doing star jumps, whatever you need in that moment, like you've got to learn to be in, in tune with yourself, obviously. You know, one of, the, one of the simple practices that I have, because I, I, as I'm working through some stuff at the moment around reactivity and aggression and like zero to 100, you know, that type of thing, I, I'm noticing that what's really important for me is like a four-step process. Um, pause and feel. Let me, let me actually just stop doing what I'm doing and let me feel the agitation. Let me feel the tension. Let me feel whatever it is, right? Next step number two, animate and express the tension, however it wants to express. So I may say to myself, how do I want to express right now? I want to shadow box, right? Or I want to stop my feet, or I want to do 25 burpees, or I want to scream into a pillow. Cool. Do the thing. Once that feels complete, observe, observe sit in silence and stillness, lay down, whatever, and just observe. Is it still there? Does it need more? Do I have to repeat, you know? Or has it dissipated? And then step four, is if it needs repetition, re repeat. It's really three steps, I guess, right? So that's that's really a big, really important practice for me. And, and why it's important for me, and I think it's important for so many people, is we, we move out of recycling our shit and we move into expansion. Like we move into the possibility of abundance because we're not holding on to the stuff that's so painful, right? And it's stopping us from living and feeling and thinking in an expansive way because we're too busy surviving with all the stuff we keep compressing and suppressing and repressing. That's why I think it's an important practice for all of us. It's, it, man, it's so big. It's, um, I actually have this just sitting on my desk. You know, mm. right? we, ah. we, as we expand, right, the, the container for what we can hold expands. A lot of people will, will experience a contraction and they'll, they'll start to expand out of it, but they'll be triggered by something. 
and recycle and go right back. And what I've seen you do, it's what we do. It's why we attracted each other is become relentless around the expansion, around um, meeting the moment with our bigness. And I think a lot of people, when times get tough, when unexpected bills happen, when things happen in relationship, we go back in. How do you, and this is one of my last questions. I know we're, we're, we got people coming in and out. Um, I've got time. I'm good, but I know you've got people coming in and out. Yeah. How do you, um, how do you do, hold on. There it is. So again, my, what I've seen of you is you're really good at moving through really hard stuff and then getting back to some level of regulation. Can you, can you explain to people and help them understand how that ties into their business, their money, and the abundance that they feel on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, great question. I think when we slow down as much as well, we have a, a tendency, a capacity, a practice of slowing down, we're able to n notice the really important details more. And we're also able to um, capture the essence of what is being offered to us, including the abundance, right? Including the opportunities, because we're not so busy surviving or so busy doing, or we're not, we're still mission focused, but we're not so mission focused that we're in survival. And if we're not in survival, we have an opportunity to thrive. Because when we're in survival, we can't expand. We're contracted, we're, we're literally by default, physiologically and psychologically and relationally, in a contracted state. We're in a fear-based state, activated sympathetic nervous system. We can't thrive and expand. We're just thinking about the present moment survival. It's, you know, it's, it's when we, we did the elementum. Well, this is one thing I missed in that elementum. This is feedback for you, right? Um, is we did this exercise and the exercise was dysregulation, regulation. And what Preston did when he demoed it, when he demoed what a regulated uh, uh, posture looked like as he was being it, it, he was in a chaotic environment and being thrown a lot of stimulus is his ability to change his eyes, his eye movement. So he'd be able to focus on the thing that he was focused on, let it go, reset, go somewhere else. When we're in survival, we're like this. We don't have a capacity to do this. We don't because we're like we're survival. We're like that. You doing that is telling your body that you're safe and that you can take in more information consciously. So leading to the abundance piece is we're not losing out on opportunities. We're able to gather them and then evaluate and say, okay, yeah, that makes sense for me. That, that feels good for me. I can take that on or no, I'm a no to that. And I'm clear. Mm. Powerful, bro. Um, last couple questions. How many guns do you have? Uh, 14 or 15? 14 <laughs> or 15 guns. Yeah, 60,000 um, 60, rounds of ammo or thereabouts. Why do you have that? Uh, you know when the zombies come? And, the, and they will at some point. The zombies. <laughs> I love it. Here's why I love it, right? Because what I see you do is embrace what's true to you, right? How many pairs of epic, like fucking sports shoes to work out in do you have well the, 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 yeah it's a good question probably like 16 or 17 the, the sad thing is i don't work out in them because i don't like to get them too dirty <laughs> this guy, this guy. so going back to abundance right what's cool about when you do your work and there's no timeline on this thing except your timeline and i'm speaking to everybody else not to you steph because you're already on your timeline but uh, use steph as a uh, a, a, a living vision board. This guy had nobody on his calls for eight to 10 months. This guy doesn't come from a bunch of money. Your parents aren't super millionaires or anything like that, right? Not even close. Not this even guy close, did his own shadow work and kept leaning in and working through stuff to get to the point where he can say, oh, I'm getting really busy. My prices have to go up. Oh, I'm getting busier. My prices have to go up. And in that there's the other aspects of him. If he wants to buy 16 guns, he can buy 16 guns. He wants to have 48 pairs of workout shoes that he won't work out in, he can do it. <laughs> because none of it is his God. 
that's the big piece that I've I've recognized, not just in with myself, but but you too. You don't put things on a pedestal per se, but you have fun with them. Mm-hmm. And I think there's there's um, if you don't hang around people who quote unquote have a lot, you won't understand or get that unless you're next to them. Steph, any final words that you want to leave people with as a, as a reminder as they continue to step into their own abundance? Um, yeah, man, I, I appreciate what you're doing here. I, I love it. I, I think all of you that are on this call, if you can get into this ecosystem and Preston's ecosystem in a greater capacity, do so. I think what you're offering, brother, and what you've created in your own life is is truly remarkable and, and very real and been very challenging. So, you know, you've got lived experience and not only do you have lived experience, you've got, you know, frameworks, because I'm very familiar with them that I think are epic. So I'll, I'll say that part. And then the other part is, just, you know, be compassionately relentless, be compassionately relentless with yourself and, and with your, with your, with your mission, with your purpose. And what I mean by that very specifically is yes, be persistent, be purposeful, don't give up, keep moving forward and be kind to yourself throughout the way. And if you need space and reprieve, create that for yourself because that's part of the abundance, right? That's part of the growth. Don't be afraid to pause, reset when you need to. Bro. Um, thank you. From the bottom of my heart. Um, Thank you for having me in your space, man. Yeah. You're, you're being a trader by moving back to California at some point. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know yet. I, don't know. <laughs> See, I, don't know. I love my guns. <laughs> exactly. You can't have your guns there at the level that you have. I don't, you know, have I don't know yet. I don't know. We're thinking about it. We're thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah.